<coughs> this is the um, uh, Dorbenton uh, variegated Dorbenton Dorbenton Pan Nash, which is a which is a uh, perennial uh, kale, and um, it's not supposed to flower. Uh, it just uh, and this is the first time it has flowered, but it's just um, it's just a spore. Um, so one of the branches from the plant, it's a many branched uh, plant, uh, has decided to put up flowers and the rest hasn't. We have um, one other um, sport, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, branches doesn't have the variegated colour and as I've lost, so this is the variegated form of Dorbent on um, uh, kale. Um, because one of the uh, branches re has regressed back to the non-variegated um, form, I can um, take a cutting from that. Uh, so, so in many ways, I'm quite pleased because it means I can uh, get back um, the original Dorbenton. Um, uh, it's propagated by um, uh, cuttings. Um, so I don't want the, um, the seeds from the flowers. If uh, if and some people have done that. There are seeds out there for Dorbenton, but it's not tree Dorbenton because what it will do is every year it will go to seed. Um, so you're selecting for um, flowering and, and seed making. So um, so yeah, so that's, that's quite interesting. It's a, it's a very tasty plant. Um, of all the perennial kales, this is the best one, I think. Uh, it's better than um, Taunton Dean. Um, anyway... Uh, that's, that's the uh, kale. I've um, also put a couple of um, cucumbers in bottomless pots, um, which I've done here. Um, yeah, one one was um, planted indoors oh, months ago. He's he, the one on the right, nice and big. The one on the left applied um, last uh, well about a month ago. Uh, so uh, yeah, in the middle we've got a prickly pine, uh, which is an edible, but I'm growing it as um, as uh, an ornamental, uh, something to keep me busy over the winter. Yeah. The um. These are my two artichokes, which again I sowed early, early Jan in indoors. Uh, Violetta de Bucocci, which is an early purple, as it says on the tin, an early in Italian, early, early purple um, um, uh, artichoke. So um, as you can see um, from seed, um, and it's uh, late April now; they're getting nice and big. I, th I think they'll be going out as soon as the weather gets a bit warmer. It still feels very cold. Um, we have some nice days and then cold days. Anyway, these these will be going in the allotment soon, um, because I can pretty much guarantee that this uh, plants this size will survive attacks by slugs uh, without immediately keeling over. I'm going to be moving um, this all out of the way now. It's got underneath the worm box. Um, which is an attempt to compost uh, my stuff, uh, my kitchen waste, without attracting rats. So um, I'm going to be moving that, and underneath we're going to be having um, sweet potatoes, which we're going to plant in a minute. There's uh, plenty of um, worm compost in there, well, there's a fair amount. Uh, and we're going to use that to put that in the bottom of this uh, 30 litre pot, which is going to be on the ground here. And we're going to maximise the fertility for the sweet potato um, uh, crop.
Right, um, remember these? These are um, these are those two sweet uh, sweet potatoes that I bought a couple of weeks ago. They're doing uh, very well in the house. Now they're going in the greenhouse. Um, this is the one that um, this one here is the one that I took cuttings from. You can see the the, the bit that it took uh, took cutting from and. It's, it's a much more attractive plant, um, it's pushed up nicely, whereas this one I didn't take cuttings from, this is uh, burgundy, as you can see it's all very sprawling, so um, yes, gardening skills. Um, yeah, anyway, right, I'll bung these in the, um, in the, pot, in the uh, pot in the ground. I did say I was going to put two in. Um, uh, four in, but uh, I'm going to put uh, two in, there's just not enough space. Uh, yeah, so this, these were repotted, um, potted on, and um, they've done nicely. A nice, good root system. I'm going to try and keep the stick with it because I've, I've noticed with plants, what's that? Notice with plants that um, if you start messing around with their support when you're planting, they tend to suffer um, a little bit. So uh, that's in. I have had a bit of more than a bit of white fly in the house. So it started off. Um, oh, as you can see, look the, the root system on that. It's coming through the bottom of the. Put the pot on the matting out, so it's going to be difficult getting out. But um, we can afford to be a bit vigorous, so they can be mistreated a little bit. So we'll pop that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to plant this um, overleggy uh, tomato. This is Furline, which is semi blight resistant, uh, like Crimson Crush. Crimson Crush is supposed to be more blight resistant, but this is a different type, uh, just for a bit of variety. What I'm going to do, you can bury these really, really deeply, and they'll produce roots from the nodes. You know, sort of here. So I'm going to bury it as deeply as I can, and then use a bottomless, bottomless pot and fill that full of compost. So what I'll do is I'll bury this first. Nice root, root system. I suppose that's obligatory to say that on gardening videos. And then I'm going to pop the pot over the top. It doesn't matter if, um, if we're going to smother um, leaves, it'll grow new ones. I'm going to get some compost and fill that up. And always leave a, a gap at the top so that when you're watering it doesn't flow straight off into the, onto the ground. Oh, I've got a bit of a couple of uh, white fly there. I got infested indoors with white fly. I've never, that's never happened to me before. But uh, some of them surviving. 
Anyway, that. Um, yeah, so hopefully that should flourish. Um, it doesn't look so leggy either uh, now. Now it's been uh, buried deep. But yeah, those extra roots in the nodes will gain extra um, extra strength for the plant, extra food. Uh, so that's uh, one of the reasons why it's done. I'm uh, down the uh, allotment and I've um, dug up the skirret. Uh, I wait until the um, until the shoot starts showing uh, before I um, div start dividing them. Uh, you've got a real mixture of uh, success and failure. Um, as you can see, they're not as productive as say a parsnip. Um, there's one clear winner, which is this one over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm selecting for uh, size. So I like the size of the tubers here. There's, a, there's fewer amount and they're long, so I like that. But the sheer productivity of this one, they're not as big, but there's much more of them. I think I'm going to uh, divide this up, uh, eat the main tubers, and then take these off uh, off shoots and replant them. And these, I'm afraid, have lost uh, the battle. Uh, to survive, um, so they're going to be eaten. They're not replanted. I mean, the, the you know this, this one's not too bad. But what I'm doing is selecting, so I'm going to cull them. I may keep uh, this one as well. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, well, that's uh, that's uh, that's it for today. Um, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, it's the seasons are moving. Um, so when we had. Uh, so what we what we're doing is sort of like transfer. It's constantly things are the seedlings are moving along. Um, so I'm emptying the house now, full of. Um, I mean, it's, it's been full of plants, and they're now coming out into the garden or in the greenhouse. But the oh, it's the cat. Anyway, the um, uh, but it won't be empty for long. Uh, so I'm sowing this week. I'll be sowing um, squashes, squashes and beans into into pots. So. That's uh, it's a constant. It's it's sort of. I used to be into perennial vegetables. I still am. Uh, I was talking about the perennial kales, um, but in um, with Britain short um, summers, um, you've got it's a race. It's, it was, I've discovered it's it's uh, and I think a lot of the uh, gardeners realise it's a race. And you've, got to, you've got to crack in a sort of like a relay race of plants get them out in the garden, get them to maturity and eat them, uh, which is a different philosophy from the permaculture philosophy I had a couple of years ago. So uh, I still believe in sustainability, but the um, closed loop systems, but uh, when it comes to making the most of the growing season, uh, I realise I've got to do it the annual, conventional annual vegetable gardening method. So. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's it then, uh, folks. Thanks, thanks for watching. Um, uh, we'll do another update soon. Cheers.